Never in our lifetimes would any of us have seen a single health issue change the way we work, connect and live to the extent that COVID-19 has. And the impact that it's had on international systems has shown just how crucial the supply and purchase of medicines are to New Zealand. Tonight's topic of medicines inequity goes right to the heart of one of our most urgent challenges. We are committed as a government to creating a fairer and more equitable health and disability system for all New Zealanders. Everybody should have the health care that they need, regardless of who they are and regardless of where they are. And we know, sadly, that that is not currently the case as of today here in New Zealand. The root cause of inequities in everything um, in every country that has a colonised and an indigenous people is institutionalised racism and colonisation. One of the key determinants of health is income, right? We all know that income is important. We all know, everybody's known forever that if you're rich, you live longer, and if you're poor, you, you're more likely to get diseases. Well, actually, ethnicity is way, way more important. And you can see on this slide that the richest Māori woman has a higher annual death rate than the poorest non-Māori woman. Much, much higher. And you can see that the death rate for people living in poverty who are Māori is almost off the scale there. And the really sad thing is that most of us, most Māori live at that high end and most New Zealand Europeans live in the rich end. So we've got big, big problems in this country. I do really want to pick up on two points and I thank the Minister for acknowledging that medicines are at the heart of health and I do want to stress that and emphasise that medicines, pharmacological agents are the most oft used tool in medicine. So we're talking about something that's highly significant, highly contributory to health outcomes and into health inequities. The other point that I would really like to stress with you is that medicines are most often obtained through primary care. So the gate to medicines is often through primary care and all of those access barriers often happen at primary care level. And we often hear people say things like, yes, well, we know there's barriers to access there. What I believe and I assert is that we do not know the depth and breadth of those access issues. I looked at, audited uh, a practice that I work in in South Auckland last year. 70% of our enrolled population in our practice has issues about coming to see us in primary care. And I do say this provocatively because we often sit and wait for the mountain to come to Muhammad and we need to rethink this space. So I would like to emphasise that because when you are disadvantaged, that disadvantage compounds and it pervades the system and makes it harder for everybody. It's basically what Leanne was saying, it's good for everybody. Everybody wins if you can deal with some of those with some of those problems and we see them playing out elsewhere in the world at the moment. So there's a real strong economic argument for dealing to inequities. Each part of the system needs to look at how we're interacting with these people who traditionally have lower health literacy, have all those socioeconomic determinants of health that you, know, you and I know about. We treat the Pacific person as an individual. Pacific, it's about the family, where there is um, reciprocity, where there is respect is paramount, where there's collectivism and communitarianism. The importance of community engagement and understanding the community we all work in that the one-size-fits-all health system can no longer do it for us. We are better than that, I believe. We need to develop the right culturally competent pathways for access. We need indigenous data sovereignty, making sure that all genomic data that is used in New Zealand stays within our New Zealand jurisdiction and not gone overseas where we can't control it, look after it. Uh, and of course, importantly, it has been side time and time again a resourcing and workforce to make sure that we can deliver on all of these important points. We've heard all the way from all of you to start the evening that in effect, are the issues ethical or are they economic? 
if, if people can't afford to access the care, is that what leads to it? Yeah, it's interesting to t think about this from an economics point of view because economics, uh, people often think it about being about value for money or efficiency, but economics is actually very interested in distribution, distributional effects. So it's kind of thinking about who gets what and why. So medicines fall really, as with the rest of the uh, scarce health dollar, exactly into that situation. So from my point of view, it's really thinking about how we understand the distribution and is that the distribution we want and we can decide that we want it to be that way, we can decide we want it to be a different way. There's some tremendous opportunities to do some things differently. There's no reason why we can't have the money follow the patient more and um, there you know, there have been some ideas around how we do that that we can, um, I think, take forward on that. The, the big three here for me though are getting back to some of the fundamentals, so I think it is making sure we have more Māori and Pacifica in those research trials so that we've got real world data and information to work from. It's making sure that outfits like the Māori Health Authority have got some teeth and have got some resources. We know that primary care-led health systems produce better outcomes, then that's something I think we want to be clear about and be driving in that direction. One of the things is to flip it around and see health not as a consumption good, but as a part of production. It's that you need good health to be able to produce an ever-strong economy. And I think that's definitely borne out by the evidence.